Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline and today we have a whole video. It is a mix of hard goods and some linens and some clothing, all of the things. But first I want to say this video is going to be a little fast paced because when I set up the camera and the lighting, this big truck pulled up on my street and started work, started drilling in front of my house. I think they're changing sewer lines. So I think the guys just went to get coffee. They're on coffee breaks. So if it seems like this video is at a clip, I am going to try to get as much in as possible while the men are away. All right. I also want to take time to thank you guys. Today is my 300th video on YouTube. Crazy craziness all of the time. So appreciative that you guys fully support my channel and have made this the success it is. All right, let's get started. I have the table laid before me. I'm just going to go through things, share with you what I paid for things, what I expect to get when I know that. Um, I'm a full-time reseller on eBay. That's pretty much where I'm selling these days and my sales have been super slow. So right after this haul, I'm going to sit my butt down and get some listing done so that I can increase my sales. All right, let's pick up the first item. The first item I found is this glass ball, beautiful. You can see there's a loop blown at the top and it actually has a little bit of a filament wire, but I'm not gonna hold the ball by it because the ball is heavy and this is very thin. Inside is like a sculptural tree looking thing. I don't know if my, my ring light is blocking that. And I think these are called witch's balls. This is an especially big one, probably the size of like a grapefruit. And what did I pay for this? I think I paid up for this. I paid $9.99, but I'm really hoping to get about $45, maybe higher once I run comps. So that is the first item, a beautiful glass ball. The next item is a big lot of red wooden beads. So I'm going to try to hold them all. There's more on the table. I think I have about six strands of these. And I'm going to just drop some of them on the floor. I imagine these are six or nine feet long. These are the kind of beads that people use to create a cranberry look on their Christmas tree or decorate for the holidays. Now you're probably thinking, why would I pick up just red beads? These can bring very good money. I was thrilled to see them. They were in a plastic baggie in a Goodwill and I think I paid $3.99 for them. So I'm gonna insert some comps here to show you what kind of money red wooden cranberry looking beads strung on, they're strung on little twine, I think. Yeah, looks like a little, just a little simple piece of twine, what kind of money these can bring. So maybe you didn't know about these. I have learned about these one time just searching them, just looking through different Christmas things and what kind of money things brought. And I found these along with glass, like these vintage glass beads. Now I don't have the glass beads here today, but the vintage glass beads that are also like a garland or a swagging, um, roped bead bring very good money too, but I'll take the wooden beads any day. And that is item number two. The next item up is a piece of pottery. I recognize this one right away. This is an angel salt glaze pot, and this is by Eldrith. Let me peel off the price sticker if I can, if I can not ruin my nails. Shout out to my girl Kim who did my nails for me. Kim is located in a nail salon right by me and with all of the schmutziness of reselling, getting my nails done is really important. Um, well, I'm not gonna be able to get the price sticker off without hurting my nails, but this is Eldrith pottery. So just a beautiful little crock. $4.99 I paid, and this isn't one of the especially um, expensive pieces from Eldrith, but I will definitely make profit. And again, I'll try to put comps on the screen for you. The next item up, I did not run comps. I don't even know if there would be comps for this, is this wooden shaped paddle with a monkey painted on it. <laughs> I won't even imagine what this is really used for, but I thought this was fantastic. It is signed 1987 by, I don't know what, Miriam Espenberg. That's what it looks like. So I'm not sure what they used the paddle for. Solid piece of wood. I thought this was fantastic. $1.99. 
and it does have a little hanging wire. <laughs> Maybe it's just to warn the children to behave themselves and not be like a monkey. <laughs> I'm not quite sure, but I really like things like this. I don't know what this is gonna bring, but because it is hand-painted, very unique item, I'll probably have it for a while. And then I imagine it's gonna sell for like maybe 20, $25, something like that. Here is a very old glass bottle. And you can see there is still dirt in it. Looks like it might have been buried for a while or whatever was in it, whatever chemical was in it, left a residue on the glass. Rumford Chemical Works. And it is in a turquoise or a teal blue. I paid $3.99 for it. And I haven't run comps on these for a while. I have sold old bottles quite a bit. This one has a little chip at the mouth. But I really like finding things like this. This is genuine, it is not a reproduction. And you can tell by the glass itself. The glass has a little bubble here and there, and you can just see that it's not a reproduction and that the branding is on it. So I am not sure what these bring. I do have to do some research. I'm thinking probably about the 18 to 22 mark. So old bottles, especially in color, are always a yes for me. Next stop is an item that I think is a reproduction, but I took it anyway. I paid $7 for this quail. I think he's a quail, maybe a pheasant doorstop. He's cast iron, and you can see the Goodwill sticker there, $6.99. Doorstops like this are quite common in my area, reproductions of them, and the older ones, the antique ones. So I just try to look for any kind of damage. Now a reproduction one will not bring what the original, the antique ones will bring, but I still think worth picking up. Best guess, probably 20, between 25 and 30, I'm gonna say. That's just a total guess. I could be off about that. So again, I have to do my research, but something like this, I just put into an eBay search, like iron, cast iron quail doorstop or bird doorstop. And then I take a look to see if any of the other sellers have listed theirs as reproductions. And I look at how that one is made, the telltale signs to learn a little bit more about it. And I take my best guess. Now, if I'm unsure if something is antique or reproduction, I will definitely put that in the listing. I always let the buyer know if I'm unsure if something is genuine, if it's an antique. You never want to have the buyer receive a reproduction and feel upset like they were tricked, but still a beautiful piece. And I felt $7 was a great price. Next up, I saw this tin sitting on a shelf. Beautiful cardinal birds. This is one of the black painted tins. What does it say on the bottom? Keller Charles of Philadelphia. Philadelphia is probably about, I think an hour for me, hour and a half, probably an hour and a half, $3.99. And I thought this would be beautiful on somebody's desk, even in a kitchen. I love stuff like this, black inside. And I'm not sure if I had to guess, probably $15 to $18. Cardinals are one of my most popular selling birds as decor on something. So cardinals, uh, yellow or gold finches make something really fly out of my store. If something has like a brown little wren bird, not as popular, but always red birds. I think people really like them because of Christmas, but also cardinals are really well loved. So I said yes to this tin. This next item I think might be a reproduction, but I'm unsure about it. So it is an oval picture frame. Let's see if I can hold it so we don't get the bounce back from the light. And on the back, this is what the back looks like. First of all, I paid $3 for it. It says made in Taiwan. So I believe that is 80s or 90s. Uh, custom made frames exclusively for flashback old time photos and that is in Wildwood, New Jersey. So I'm just taking a look at, uh, they have other locations for the business. So I guess they bring these in for people that have old time photos taken and they sell the frame. The reason I picked this up is the glass is curved. And I love when I find framed items that have um, either bubble glass or curved glass. It's not as common as regular photo frames that we find in stores where it's just flat or straight. 
So that is the thing that caused me to purchase this and also $3, you can't go wrong. Now this does have a piece of glass, so I really have stated multiple times I'm over shipping glass, but we all know I make exceptions. So I said yes to a beautiful oval ornate frame with curved glass. Okay, so you guys know most hauls I am including shoes. I started that at the very beginning. Only once I have forgotten and you guys were on it, you all told me, hey, you forgot to show a pair of shoes. So right now I'm gonna show you these moccasin booties in a beautiful suede leather. So this is Minnetonka. Here is the other one. Really nice condition. And what size are these? These are a 10. So Minnetonka label looks like that. I don't buy all Minnetonka shoes. If the moccasins are beaded or heavily embellished, I'll pick them up. I really liked these because they had the double row of fringe. They had stud detail and they're just in beautiful shape. I paid $9.47, I think. Uh, yep, $9.47. Now, Minnetonka won't bring as much as some of the better brands. I know Fry puts out a gorgeous, gorgeous suede boot. I have only found those once, and I think those sold for like $400. But I don't expect to get, there's a little thread hanging, get that much for these. But I think these will do quite well. So yes to Minnetonka boots for under $10. All right, as long as I'm doing shoes, I'll do a few more pairs because they're on the table. This next pair of sandals... I gravitate towards because look at the rhinestones on them. These almost reminded me of Birkenstocks, which is a whole nother story. So down a rabbit hole we go. The other day I was thrifting, Roger and I were thrifting. We went to quite a few stores. And in one store I was just throwing things in my cart because the store had a lot of inventory. And I picked up a pair or two of fake Birkenstocks. I don't know how I made that mistake, but be encouraged that even after all of this time in business, I still make mistakes. No, I will not sell fake items, you know, items that are counterfeited, what I will do is try to bring them back to the store, even though they don't take returns, and, um, and let them know that they were fake, and I really feel like they should give me store credit. I never ask for my money back, but hopefully I will be able to redeem that mistake. Altogether, I think I spend $15, $16 on the two pairs. So not a horrible mistake, but I just wanted to put that out there to keep it real, to encourage you guys that we all make mistakes from time to time, and it causes me to think to myself, I need to slow down and make sure what I am picking up is what I think I'm picking up. But let's get back to these shoes. Mila Paoli, made in Italy. Beautiful, beautiful. And there is the branding. Did I mention I paid $7.47 for these? And let's all pray this is not my size. I love these shoes. I have too many pairs of shoes right now. And I don't know where the size is, which sometimes that happens. You'll pick up something and you get it home and it doesn't have a size marked in it. What I do is give the measurement of the footbed on the inside of the shoe and the outside of the shoe. Now that's not as good as including the size. Sometimes you can go on to a certain brand website and look and see if their shoe size chart or any size chart has measurements and that you can take a guess from there. Again, I always put a question mark if there's no size marked that I'm guessing at it, but um, these are just beautiful. And like I said, I'm not seeing a size up oh, Size six, whew. <laughs> so I said yes to this. This does not look like a six now that we're talking about. I'm gonna slip it on my foot because I'm barefoot right now. And that might be a nine. So I might be looking at that upside down. Yeah, these are a nine. So Lisa, if you're watching and you like these, I think Lisa's a nine. Um, they'll be in my store. <laughs> I'm only kidding, she can have them. And I paid $7.47. I don't know what Mila Paoli brings, but I can tell that it's a quality shoe made in Italy, and I think I'm gonna be pleasantly surprised of what these bring. I'll report back on my Instagram to let you guys know how these did on eBay. All right, last pair of shoes, I think, are these Brooks running sneakers. Brooks is a well-loved brand. I always grab these when they're in great shape. I make sure that there's no holes, there's no separation of the shoe from the sole, 
You want to look at the tread because a lot of times if a person has a certain way of stepping or running, they will wear out one portion of the sole more than the rest of it. So you might take a quick look and not realize there's a certain area of baldness in the tread. But these are in great shape and they're like a purple and gray. And there is the Brooks branding. All right, what did I pay for these? $7.47. And Brooks, I think right now, something like this, $30 to $35, even for pre-owned, as long as they're in good shape. Next up is a type of item that I love to share with you guys, linens. This is one of the types of items that falls into that category. A lot of times you can buy in low and sell high. So here is a duvet cover. I just finished washing this one. This is Ralph Lauren. It is a king size duvet with a ruffle edge, just beautiful. When I bring these home, I clip off the price tag. Well, first of all, let me back up and say in the store, I always open it up to make sure it's not stained. So you don't want bed linens, especially with a lot of stains. Most times I will just get rid of something like that or not even buy it to begin with. But linens, when I check in the store, people are like, oh, you buy linens? I really don't want to you know, sell linens. To me, this is a wonderful thing because you're buying in, this one I paid $2.50 for. You get home, clip off the tag, put it right in the washing machine. Don't allow linens that haven't been washed to sit around because you'll just become discouraged. Plus, who wants dirty linens in their house? So I have made it a practice even before unpacking the car, I take the linens out first, put them right to the washing machine, put them, you know, start the water. And by the time I'm done unloading the car from my hauling trip, from my thrifting trip, my linens are ready to either be hung dry or dry or dried. There's no ironing. You don't have to steam it. So now it's beautifully freshly washed. You can let people know there's no stains freshly washed. And Ralph Lauren brings the money, always brings the money for me. Ralph Lauren Pottery Barn Restoration Hardware. There are a couple of names where you can find linens because the people that work in most thrift stores do not um, study brands of linens. They don't recognize it. That's been my experience. And I'm not saying that to be mean, but like shoes, everybody knows Nike. You know what I'm saying? Handbags, everybody knows Coach. But linens, a lot of the employees that work in thrift stores do not take time to research what kind of profit these linens can bring. So it's always a win for me. I always share this with you guys. So Ralph Lauren, king size duvet covered, already washed clean, ready to go. I imagine this is going to bring over $60. So great profit capability in linens. Don't let the work scare you. Just start your washing machine, put it right in, throw soap in, and by the time you're unloading the car, it's ready to go into the dryer and you're good to go. Okay, this next linen I might have paid too much for. These are Lily Pulitzer, new with tags, I believe. Yes, I thought I saw a tag on it. I paid $2.50 a piece. Um, oh, they're called guest towels. I like that even better. To me, this looks like a placemat. I imagine you could use it as a dress or scarf or whatever. So I picked up this one, pom-pom trim. Now, Lily Pulitzer, you can look up the print. You kind of describe it and put it into a Google search, and almost always you can find the print. I don't think this one has the identification number. Looking, looking. It has an RN number. So if you put in Lily Pulitzer with the RN number, the print might come up. I have not found great success with that. But um, I got two of them, but I paid $2.50 each. I think this would have been better if I paid $2.50 for the two of them, but we will see how these do. I don't even know what these are going to bring, but Lily Pulitzer in new condition is almost always a yes for me, as long as the buy-in price is fair. So back in the day, meaning probably over five years ago, I used to pick up a lot of wood cigar boxes. People were making like a craft project. They were turning them into guitars. And that became quite popular for a while. So I could sell a cigar, a wooden box, a nice one, for over $20. Then I think the market got saturated and the cigar box sales slowed down. But I did pick up this one. This is beautiful and I couldn't pass it by. So you can see it has like a marquetry look, but this is not marquetry. It's just that it's been painted in the design to look like marquetry. And the box itself is in beautiful condition. This is what it looks like inside, nice and clean. 
I paid $4.99 for it, and I'm guessing this one's going to bring probably about $20 to $25. So I said yes to beautiful cigar boxes, hand-painted. So a lot of the items that are really trending and are popular on eBay and sell through very quickly, I did not jump on the bandwagon. I'm not quite sure why. I felt like, I think this is what it is, I felt like everybody else was doing it and I always wanted to do something different. And I felt like a lot of times the things were faked. I don't want to get involved with that. But like things like cell phones, Nike sneakers, Funko Pops, you know, all of the things that we know, like you grab a Immediately, I usually don't buy. I think this is an exception. I saw this sitting on the shelf. Let's see if I can get the light out of it. This is Pop Games D Diva with Mecca. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But I saw that it was new in box. I did have to run a comp. I paid $15 for this one. So I'm not sure if that was a bad buy, a mistake on my part. But when it's something like that, I'm willing to pay a little bit more than what I normally pay for my items to get the education. Something like this forces me to learn about a certain niche. So while I'm not going to start picking up Funko Pops or toys like that, I felt like this was a good opportunity for me just to get a little education, to sit down, just research it for a little while, not go down a rabbit hole and just see if I can make some money on it. So $15 for this Pop Games. What is this even called? Overwatch 177. Thank goodness it has a number. I love when things have identification. I always say this, they have good branding because that way it makes it easier to create a listing and easier to research for the listing. So I said yes to it. All right, so as you can tell, I have pulled up the clothing rack. We're just going to go over a few pieces of clothing. You guys have been asking more and more for me to share what kind of pieces I pick up, why I pick them up, what my thinking is, because a lot of times the clothing I'm picking up is either vintage or brands that aren't really widely talked about, but yet I'm lavender clothesline, so the majority of my sales still comes from clothing, but some weeks it's fairly close, 50-50 of hard goods and clothing. But I feel with USB Yes, raising their prices once again, clothing is more safe to get into, to put money into as a general rule. Don't go picking up every piece of clothing, but it's easier to ship, it's easier to clean in my opinion, and this sell-through is a little bit higher for me, I think, because the shipping is lower. So when somebody sees something they like, the shipping is just naturally lower because most times it's first class and you're slipping it into a poly mailer. All right, let's get started with clothing and I'll share my thoughts of why I picked it up and what I think it's gonna sell for. Recently, I was speaking a lot about these fisherman sweaters and I was thrilled to find this one because it is an intarsia with, let me see if I can get that in the light, with anchors, very nautical, beautiful condition. This is a men's and let me get rid of the hangers so I can really show you the branding. This is the Golden Fleece Brooks Brothers. So the Golden Fleece is Brooks Brothers um, logo, I'm going to call it. This is an extra large, which that's great. And I paid $5.75 for this sweater. So high hopes for this sweater, probably between $50 and $60 I'll get for this. I think men that want to be <laughs> sailors, <laughs> like they're very into boating, nautical, you know, dockside life, all of those things are really attracted to this type of thing. So your keywords are really important with a sweater like this. I will put yacht, sailing, boat, all of those words in my title so that it doesn't really help with the search, but here's my thinking. When you use special keywords and somebody has already decided to look for this type of sweater, as they're scrolling, those words catch their eye. Now, when a person is looking for a sweater, I don't know that they're gonna put yacht sweater in a search, but I really think it helps at the end of the title to have descriptive keywords that really hone in on the type of sweater it is. I don't think I can prove any of that, but that is my thinking and it has helped over the course of my 10 years of selling. All right, let's take a look at item number two. So this little jacket caught my eye because the print was phenomenal. Look at this. This is all embroidery. Do we love this? Yes, we do. So I actually got this in the dollar sale. So I paid a dollar five because that's what their sale is. It was originally eight dollars. 
So let me just say, I really appreciate the thrift stores marking their items up to prices they're never going to get, and then the thing gets thrown into the bins or it goes on sale. I'd much rather have it go on sale because I don't go to the bins a lot. But for me, if the thrift stores are going to overprice but then run a sale, it gives me the opportunity to buy pieces at a very cost-effective price. So I'm going to show you the label for this one. That is what the label looks like. Now, I don't know who this Camille Marie is. I've probably picked up this brand, but it's not a brand that I remember and say, oh, Camille Marie. But this is a large, and the thing I love about it is 100% silk. And like I said, this kind of work in a jacket is just beautiful. I think this is going to do well. I'm going to guess $30 to $35, and I paid $1.05. Where else can you make that kind of profit? Amazing. Now, I don't know that it's going to fly out of the store, but as always, I have patience and all of my items eventually sell. I don't think I really re-donate or throw anything out. The only time that I don't list inventory that I have is if it has a big defect. And yesterday, I got to talk to one of the CEOs of Goodwill for our region. I think he's the CEO maybe for Keystone, not quite sure. And I just went over, introduced myself, told him how much I love Goodwill, that I've been in that particular store for 10 years every week. And I just shared with him. I said, can I share with you what I'm here? from other shoppers and he was all about it he not only listened but shout out to this man I won't give his name because I don't know that I really have permission to do that but he was great he supports resellers he said because you're part of Goodwill's mission we are all about training employees you know and helping them get into the workforce or promote their work uh, life. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And he said, and you resellers, he called us third-party resellers, he said are the same thing, so we are happy to support you. I was thrilled. In all of my years, I've never heard a Goodwill employee say that. A lot of times, Goodwill employees don't care that there are resellers in the store. But um, yeah, so I was, I was thrilled to have a great conversation and just share with him my thoughts. All right, let's keep going. This item I was on the fence about, this is Tommy Bahama. Now I do like the colorway. I love this broad stripe. It's almost like a blanket stripe. Here's the Tommy Bahama label. So this is a woman's tunic, something you throw on over maybe a swimsuit at the beach as the evening gets cool. You know, you gotta paint the whole picture. And I thought this was great, 575. I'm thinking probably 22 to 24, something like that. Here is a very odd piece. Not odd because I haven't picked these up before. I pick these up all the time, but odd because I saw it the other day and they wanted $15 and I was like, oh heck no, I'm not paying $15 for that. And then yesterday I found it coming out on a new rack and it was $10.25. I'm not sure what happened there and normally I won't pay $10.25, but I really like this style. So this is 100% silk. It is a vintage jacket. And I call this a Baroque pattern, B-A-R-O-Q-U-E. I'm a terrible speller. It's kind of like a bomber style, solid red interior, and I really like it. Let me take it off the hanger so we can look at the branding. This one is EVR. So that is what the branding or the tag looks like. So it is a zip up. A lot of times these type of jackets will have shoulder pads. When you find shoulder pads in an item, nine times out of 10, that means it's vintage because shoulder pads are not really, <laughs> not really in style. And sure enough, when I look at the shoulder, this one has the remaining of the hook and loop. Do not say the V word because that'll get you a Vero, um, but a hook and loop or Velcro where the shoulder pad attached. But for those of you who don't know, there are certain brands you cannot list or cannot title uh, with the branding. On eBay, it'll get you a Vero, which is a strike on your account, and Velcro is one of them. Never say Velcro on eBay. If you need to describe one of your items with Velcro, you say hook and loop. It's crazy. There is quite the list of items that will get you in trouble with eBay, and certain branding do not want their trademark names, logos, pictures used. So, um, but anyway, I got off track. Silk jacket, bomber style, Baroque print, just beautiful. 
and I did pay up for it. I will report back on Instagram with that one. I think I recently sold one not as good as this one, and I think that one brought 45. Again, I'll try to put uh, a screenshot of that in here so you guys can get the idea of the type of jacket that I pick up. All right, this video will just go on forever, and I think those work guys are gonna come back. They are drilling everybody's front yard where your yard meets the street, and they are putting in new sewer connections, and the machine makes, it's a big truck, a lot of noise so I really want to get this video out and today I'm home so my whole house you would hear it all right next item up I picked these up just purely on I like them now this is LL Bean so it's good branding I call this kind of like a hiking pant these are the quick dry material ones Here is the branding. We all know L.L. Bean. They still make a beautiful product. In my opinion, their vintage L.L. Bean is even higher quality, and I do well with this kind of pant. So I paid $5. Like I said, a woman's 14. If this would have been my size, I would have held on to this. Nothing like putting on a lightweight pair of pants that are comfortable and little, you know, scuffy, I don't know, clog shoes. <laughs> I am so at the relaxed clothing stage of life. It's not even funny, but I really like this colorway too, kind of like a terracotta, which I think is a trending color for a 2022. Did you guys know that you can Google trending colors of a year? So you just go into a Google search and you can search by Pantone, I think that's how we say it, uh, color of the year. And the colors will come up for home interior, for things as simple as nail polish color, and you can get an idea of what's in the fashion magazines of what color is the color of the year. So if you see a non-branded or an off-brand beautiful piece of clothing and it's in that color you can play up the color rather than the lack of you know great branding so i have done that over the years and it has actually worked so that is a great tip all right next item all right so we all know this logo i don't pick up a lot of tommy but when it has the big flag like this always pick this up i always do so i'm saying i pick it up i'm not telling you guys to pick it up uh this is a large which is great and 575 more than fair it's in good condition i haven't washed this yet when i find these i look to make sure the flag is not brittle or cracking because as this gets a lot of wear and gets washed a lot or put in the dryer this will have cracking in it that's not supposed to be there so i do not pick those up but this should bring i'm thinking probably 25 to 30. who could resist this sweatshirt so it is a little hoodie and I love that it's all the emotions of Mickey. He's mad. <laughs> He's laughing. I think this is great. Okay, so we can see the Disney branding. And what it, oh, it's new with tags, which is great. I don't know if I realized that in the store. I might have $25 and I paid $7.75. This will do quite well. So just a woman's. This might be cropped. I'll have to measure it. So the measurements that I give for something like this is bust, which is armpit to armpit and doubled. I give waist, so side to side and double. I give length from shoulder to hem, and I give um, an arm length or sleeve length. For women's, I measure from underneath where the seam uh, joins the side seam to the end of the cuff. So that is pretty much across the board. The only measurements I give, except for men's jacket, I do a shoulder. So shoulder seam to shoulder seam. Uh, pants, of course, I do inseam, waist, hip, and I do not give leg opening. Sometimes I get asked for that, but you can only give so many measurements. And um, yeah, but I think that's going to do really well. All right, the last few items. Let's get this done. Bets, B-E-T-S by Canvas Backs, 2X, one of the reasons I picked it up. It is a quilted lag and look jacket. I paid $7 for it. Really nice condition. This brand does well. I don't find this brand a lot. So when I spot this, it's not because I recognize the brand, but I recognize the style. A lot of women like this lag and look style. 
Lag and Look is a style that's a little bit oversized, it's relaxed, a lot of times the underarm is more of a blassoon style, it's very cozy and it doesn't hug the body, it has a lot of room or billowing to it. So I felt like this jacket would fall into that category, $7 I pay, probably $30 to $35. Now, why in the world would I pick this up? This is just Jones, New York, and it is a skirt. So a skirt, as everybody knows, are shorts under a skirt. And I will pick these up in Jones, New York, all day long. I do well with these. These are good for tennis, for golf. A lot of women who don't really want to wear shorts, myself included sometimes, I mean, I do wear shorts, but I much rather wear a skirt. It's more comfortable. And if I can get these for under $5, I go ahead and do. Another thing I love about these, almost always stretch waist. So super, super comfortable. Women look for these. This one's an especially good print. And what did I pay? I paid $4.50 and this one's a large. So I'm going to say I'll probably get a solid $20 for this. And when you see Jones, New York, it might not be the first thing in your mind to run a comp, but you do want to run a comp on skorts when you find them. All right, next item up, a pair of men's pajama pants. This is Land's End Medium 1012. It's not men's, women's pants. Pajama pant. I should have recognized it. Look at that. Look at that ribbon. Very Christmassy, but I still picked them up. I think these are new without tags. Do they have a tag? They do not. What did I pay for these? $4.99. But Land's End makes a good flannel. They make great flannel sheets. So I felt like I could probably get solid 16 to 18 for these. Even though it's not Christmas time, I will still list these with this listing. So anything in this haul will most likely be listed by next week at this time. I am running a little bit slower than I used to for all of the YouTubing that I'm doing. So when you go out and film and you have to do the editing, now Lisa does my editing, but I'm very involved in that process. We do a lot of talking and planning up the video and I create the thumbnail and talk about, you know, plan what I want to talk about with you guys. So YouTube has really taken up a lot of time, but I just want to say again, thank you guys. This is my 300th video. I can't believe I've made 300 YouTube videos in under three years. That's a hundred a year. That's crazy to even think about, but I'm still having a great time. And let me just say, I love meeting you guys. This week, I got to meet a family from Texas in my Goodwill, and they came to the Goodwill because I had mentioned it here on the channel. And yesterday, I met another family. So shout out to you guys. I appreciate all of you coming up and saying hello, and I am celebrating 300 videos today, so I think I'm going to have a piece of cake or something and then work on editing this video. All right, let's look at the last item. This last item, again, is just a slouchy, comfortable style. I did not look this up. I think we say Merisee. So that is, I don't know if that's going to show. Let me lower this light. See if that helps. But when I saw this hanging on the rack, I felt it. Very nice quality, beautiful condition. Not sure of the size. Hopefully there is a size there. I should have taken a look. Look at these little tiny pockets. I'm not quite sure what you'd keep in that pocket. Maybe like a little quarter in case you need to make a phone call. Remember those days? All right. So let me see if there is sizing. I paid $5.75 for it and I didn't even look it up. Shame on me. Sometimes I'm thrifting so much, I just have to use my judgment. And this is, it has an RN number, which is great. Huh, I do not see a size. I'm probably looking right at it. Size one size, one size fits most. So that really shows that it's like a slouchy oversized and, um, and I really liked it. All right, so the next item you might have seen in the background is this gorgeous, upside down, poster, Gone with the Wind. Let me see if I can get the light off of it. Look how good this is. So I did see about three or four framed posters in one of the thrift stores. And the way that I judge posters is running a comp on them first and then condition second. So this one is 1976 Portal Publications and 1967 MGM. 
So that is the type of information that I will put in, of course, with the name of the movie. We all know Gone with the Wind. This is a favorite. I remember the first time I saw this, my mom had brought me and we were in the movie theater for like, I don't know, forever. And I was so young, so young. <laughs> But um, this is fantastic. I paid $4.99 for it. Now to sell this, I will take this out of the frame. This is just a simple, you know, inexpensive poster frame. So I won't bother with that. I will take it out of the frame, photograph it listed, and put in the listing that it'll be shipped rolled in a tube. Now recently, USPS announced a rate hike for items that are long. So this is golf clubs, baseball bats, curtain rods, posters, wallpaper, anything that has length to it. You want to make sure that you're shipping it a different method than USPS because they're putting a surcharge on top of the regular charge, high charge, high price for shipping. I think it's $4, don't quote me on this, for anything over 22 inches. And I think it's like $15, that could be wrong, anything over 30 inches. So they really don't want you shipping long items. But I'm gonna keep shipping posters, I'm just gonna use a different carrier service. So great poster, $4.99. I forgot what the comp said, I think probably 25 to 30 if they're in good condition, which this one is. All right guys, so that is the video for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I remember when I made my first video, probably about two and a half years, almost three years ago, and I took a look at it and I was like, oh my gosh, heck no, I'm not putting it out there. But I just stuck with it and here I am, 300 videos and over 45,000 viewers. Guys, thank you so much. I couldn't have done any of this without you and I appreciate all of you. I appreciate you saying hi to me and your words of encouragement and just helping to make this channel a success. Love you guys. Go out and get what's yours. Mm -hmm.